Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to open up this box right here, which is supposed to contain a prototype sword from Musashi in the European realm of things, and I'm going to see if that's what's actually in the box, and then give you some thoughts and uh, general first impressions on it. Anyway, on with the uh, the man here. I always find it funny how people have like big, elaborate, unboxing, giant knives. And I suppose I do on the back wall here, but I find it easier to open things with a little dedicated box of them rather than some grotesquely huge something or other. I'm not less likely to stab my face. Alright, so in terms of packaging, uh, I'm not going to go into it too much, one, because I don't venture, I guess you could, but uh, two, this is a, a prototype, so I don't know exactly how the, the final packaging would be. I am a supply chain nerd, and so I tend to harp on packaging because I don't think it necessarily represents a thing that customers are willing to pay more for, uh, at least not by and large, but you expect it to do exactly what it's supposed to do, as in be sufficient to get your sword to you undamaged. So, the, the amount of manufacturer puts in the packaging is something I pay attention to. This is a simple plastic bag in a box with styrofoam. It does the job, but maybe the non-prototype version would be different. Initial thoughts here, we got a belt system. The leather, uh, I don't know how to tell if it's good or bad necessarily, but it's stitched and it has a clean face on, on either side. It's soft, and I'm not sure not sure how good or bad the leather is. But it's a little cleaner looking than some of the other suspension systems that I've, I've gotten on inexpensive swords. These stitched kind of riser areas in, which give a place for the stuff to, the little loops to, to rest. A lot of times there's a metal, a metal shape, I think is the, the word. This, this doesn't have it, it's got a little bit, basically it looks like a, an exercise in sewing leather. There's stitched leather everywhere here, uh, where the, the shape would be, it feels like a wooden cord scabbard, or at least some sort of hard scabbard underneath. And then these stitched areas here I find to be an interesting solution. Now this is a sword from Musashi, and it's supposed to be a cost-effective, practical sword in the European variety, and kind of target the same type of audience that might buy a Musashi Kitano, as in it's not, it's not necessarily going to be the highest end thing, it's meant to provide value at an economical price point. How much these are going to be, I don't exactly know. I've heard maybe under 200 bucks or 250, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, anyway, that should temper what I'm expecting to see here, I suppose, is the basic gist. I do find this stitching to be, to be interesting. I don't know if it's historic or ahistoric, I'm, I'm kind of useless when it comes to how, how historically relevant or accurate this kind of thing would be. I just find it to be interesting. A lot of times there are leather risers underneath the scabbard which is glued down and that's what provides kind of the riser. This looks like a glove that was fitted over the scabbard uh, with some stitched in areas to provide little pockets. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on that. The cross guard looks to have, you know, reasonably interesting and consistent, maybe consistent shape? I'm not sure if that is even or not. I, it looks a little odd to my eye, but I'm sick right now, so everything looks a little odd. Okay, well, apart from the fuzzy bits on here, one thing I noticed right away is that there's a big ledge at the end of the guard here, which doesn't bite into my hands as I hold it, but it's, uh, it's a little unsightly, and ideally the transition between the, the grip and this would be a little less jarring, I suppose might be the word that I would use here. Also, this little cross section that's inlaid is crisp enough, um, but as I rub my hand on it, if my palm goes over it, I can kind of feel some of those ledges uh, bite bite in a little bit. This ledge is soft and doesn't doesn't snag on my skin, but these little points on the cross in here, this side in particular, seem seem to be sharp enough to at least grab onto something. Anyway, I'm not bleeding yet, so not so bad. The edges on the cross guard are not sharp either. 
so that's good. The leather grip here, um, well, it has a stitching along here, which reminds me a little bit of some of the stuff Windless does. But these stitches, if I'm going to guess, are not going to necessarily hold up super well. It's clean looking, but I'm a little nervous about the durability there. I suppose time will tell as I beat the piss out of this thing, it, it will it will tell how well it hung it held up. In fairness, I was really nervous about the Ito on the, the $50 short I tested from Musashi, and that held up better than I expected, so maybe this will be the same thing. Underneath here though, I feel what appears to be a kind of a cord wrap, and I can just I can move the leather around if I push on it hard enough with my fingers. So it doesn't feel incredibly tight, but I suppose time will tell. As I hold it in my hand though, it's comfortable, it's ovoid, it's easy to index. It tapers slightly one way, but is pretty plain in, in the other. It doesn't taper, it doesn't have a distal taper, I suppose you would say, uh, but it does, it does kind of taper one way. Uh, and it's easy enough to index. The scabbard is, I don't know exactly how European scabbards are supposed to be. Some people say the sword should fall out. Other people say it should grab and, and not fall out. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. In any case, it doesn't rattle a whole lot. It doesn't jar around a whole lot at the mouth, but it does come out without falling out. It's smooth enough in there though. It appears to be, I don't know if it's plastic or wood, I'm not sure what the, the core of the scabbard is. All right, blade-wise, this is supposed to be a 1060 uh, sword. And so, what does that mean? Well, it's made out of a through-hardened 1060 steel, uh, you know, inherently, this is supposed to be three pounds, seven ounces, or about three, three and a half pounds thereabouts. So it's a heavy sword, and I certainly feel it. This feels, feels clunky. Um, <laughs> It's not exactly nimble, it feels like a stout, bashy sword, so if you like something heavy, then this, this isn't necessarily a bad, a bad piece. And I'm indoors, so I'm not going to swing it around too much, but, oh, yeah, that is, that is a chunk to move around. Flip side, the planes in the sword are pretty even, I mean, for a, for around two hundred dollar sword, assuming that's that's what it's going to come out to, it seems seems relatively relatively clean. It's got a pronounced central ridge. It doesn't have a very significant distal taper, hence hence the weight. Ooh, this will get you tired. But I can I can grab the the pommel. I can use it with one hand or two hands. But it is it is a heavy one. Anyway, there we go. I don't know exactly what type of sword this would be. It's a long sword, bastard sword. I'm not sure what typology this is, is emulating. Hopefully it won't rattle out of my hands when I go to whack it into stuff. With the oil off, I can see a few more ripples than I initially thought were there, but still, you know, cleaner than, than some of the windless pieces out there. Also, the, the ridge section is is straight and pretty well pronounced. I don't notice any waves in the edges in the the blade profile doesn't appear to have a grotesque secondary bevel. A lot of times on these European swords that don't come sharp, there's a sharpening service that's done in the US to add an edge on them and it's got a big secondary bevel which is, is less ideal for cutting than, than something that comes with the, the correct kind of edge profile without a, a very distinct secondary bevel. mostly me. I'm not terribly competent at cutting these paper swatches here. It feels like it has a decent a decent edge on it and given the weight I imagine that it'll it'll be effective at, at cutting tatami and such. Just it has a lot of momentum to move forward and not a big secondary bevel but I don't know I guess time will tell. We'll see how well how well it does. Inherently though it's a big it's a big one, which makes me think it's probably going to be durable and hold up to a lot of a lot of punishment. We'll see how well this handle holds up, um, but I, I don't think it's going to have the same sense of refinement. I'll put in the weapon dynamics computer and such when I get to the 
the actual review component, though for the moment, uh, you should know, I've been told it's three pounds, seven ounces. I'll check that and try to put additional measurements in the description down below. Anyway, look forward to a review on this thing. I'll do some destruction testing. If you have anything in particular you'd like to see in the review, throw it in the commentary down below. I'm gonna wait till I get a little, a little healthier. <laughs> caught it to do that fucked it up okay I'm gonna wait till I get a little healthier uh, before I do the review but I will be doing one I will swing this I will eventually uh, do a destruction test on it testing isn't necessarily the right word I will break it and then bring you along for the journey and see how well it holds up to the things that it should be able to do and, and the things that it certainly shouldn't be able to do and we'll hopefully you'll be able to garner some information on how well this product suits you from from me doing that anyway that's all I've got for right now. I hope it's been interesting. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.